what's up guys welcome back to champion tree hunting you know i feel like it's been a while since we just did like a standard go out and find a tree type one of these videos you know i'm doing all these gimmicks and stuff so today we're just gonna go find ourselves an elder tree and talk about it in this case it is the connecticut state champion eastern hemlock which should be gigantic because eastern hemlocks can get pretty big i know that it is somewhere in this giant cemetery i'm in right now so we might have to do a little bit of wandering, but it shouldn't be that hard to spot considering how big this tree is gonna be. By the way, seems like the landscapers are over there doing something. So if you hear some noise in the background of this video, that's what it is. It's a really gorgeous cemetery though. Seems like there's a lot of champion trees hiding out in cemeteries like this. And it makes sense, right? Cause who's gonna have the gall to cut down this oak tree here when it's probably planted to honor the grave of the guy sitting next to it. Obviously you can't beat like the middle of autumn, you know, when the, every single tree has a bunch of color on it. But I gotta say, I actually really love late autumn, like, like uh, beginning to middle of November, especially around cities where trees lose their leaves a little slower. This kind of like brownish, yellowish, golden color that all the oak trees turn. So pretty. Where are you at, Hemlock? Here, Hemi, 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 Hemi. Hemlocks at their biggest can grow to be like a hundred feet tall, easy, and uh, like as old as 500 years. So I'm really expecting this guy to be really massive. I think the I think I remember reading the ones down south can grow a hair bigger, but even then this one should be quite sizable. Check that out. I see what looks like a clump of evergreen trees over on the side there. I'm, I got a good feeling about that spot. I can't really tell if there's any hemlocks over there from here, but we're gonna find out. All right, I feel like this has gotta be where the hemlocks are, that little grove over there. Whoa, there's actually graves back here in this little foresty part. I totally thought this was just gonna be like a kind of forested edge of the cemetery but there's stuff back here. Oh, oh my, holy cow. Just like a little courtyard. There's a bunch of hemlocks back in here, actually. These are all hemlocks. Not the, the colorful one, obviously. But all these. Man, I gotta say, I almost didn't come cover this tree because I don't really like doing videos on stuff that is this deep into you know thickly settled areas mostly because of that noise you've been hearing the whole time but i'm so glad i did it you know it's just a reminder that even in real dense uh patches of civilization you can find crazy little alcoves like this there's not even any like <laughs> like like uh, paved roads or anything leading into here i never would have found it if i wasn't looking for the tree i just would have thought it was a little patch of forest on the side of the cemetery These are some giant hemlocks, man. Like every single one of these is huge. I found a picture of the actual champion, so I should be able to, to pick it out. But geez, these are all giant. These are some old trees for real.
That's an oak up there, by the way, if you're wondering what that big, huge tree is. It still has a lot of fall color. Oh my God. It has gotta be this one. This is the biggest one by far that I've seen in this little grove. Holy cow. Look at that. I'm gonna look at my picture. There's, I'm shocked if it's not this one. All right, I just looked at my picture and 110%, this is it right here. Man, first thing I'm noticing about this tree too, by the way, and actually a lot of the hemlocks around here is that it, it's got a split trunk like that, see? Same thing with this one over here and this one right here too. Actually, nope, that is a split trunk. That is super weird to see in hemlock trees. Uh, it means that either something is going nuts with the soil composition around here that's causing the trees to split like that, or they were all damaged somehow when they were young. So I'm thinking it's probably the soil composition, but I don't know. I know for sure it's not uh, stump sprouting because hemlock trees don't really do that. If you don't know what stump sprouting is, basically whenever a, a tree gets cut down, sometimes it can sprout basically new trunks out of the stumps. And that's gonna be the explanation for seeing uh, multi-trunked trees like this in certain other species, like oak in particular. But that doesn't really happen with hemlock, especially with how low these cuts would have had to be. So almost definitely it's got to be something with, I don't know, the proximity to so many people and all the cars and I don't know, but something, something's going on with this grove of hemlocks that's causing them all to split like that. That's crazy. Anyway though, I'm like a giant fan of this kind of tree species. You can tell it apart from other evergreen trees like white pine because of these short little flat needles it's got here. Lots of these handsome little pine cones too. Uh, you can find these all over the eastern half of the U.S. You've probably seen them before if you spend any kind of time in the woods. Pretty much anywhere from here down to northern Georgia. And then out to Michigan and Wisconsin at its furthest west. There's even a, a few in Minnesota too. They're a pretty tough species. They can handle a lot of different environments. They grow really well right in the middle of stands of big deciduous trees like oaks and maples. Which is uh, really uncommon for kind of any kind of tree. Uh, sometimes you'll be in a, a big, giant, tall, thick oak forest, and then all of a sudden, way underneath the canopy, you'll just see a little eastern hemlock chugging along, growing like it totally belongs right next to all these big oak trees. A lot of other species wouldn't be able to survive having the sun blocked out like that by the canopy of the oak trees, but hemlocks are one of the most shade-tolerant trees on the entire continent, if not the world. Uh, heavy shade does kind of stunt their growth, though, kind of like... Uh, uh, like they don't bother growing if there's no opening in the canopy above them that they could grow towards, right? Like you can literally find like a four foot tall Eastern hemlock tree out in an oak forest that's actually like 80 years old. Uh, I even read one, uh, one account of a little hemlock that only had a 10 inch wide trunk that was actually over 300 years old. It just hadn't bothered to grow up much because what's the point, right? It's not gonna beat the oak trees. Uh, hemlock can grow in its own little stands too though and hemlock stands are kind of crazy when you come across them out on the trail like you'll go from a nice bright oak or birch forest or something into this ridiculously dark hemlock forest out of the blue their branches and leaves are so thick and they really suck up resources too so not a lot of other plant species can grow around them you just got this crazy dark thick hemlock forest blocking out everything else uh, so the ground gets really wet underneath their canopy too so you can find lots Lots of little pools of like salamanders and stuff in there. A lot of a lot of animals, little amphibians and stuff that breed in vernal pools and water depend on these guys. Uh, it's a it, in general, it's just a super important tree for the forest it grows in too. Like uh, hemlocks provide a lot of protective cover for bigger animals like deer, especially in big winter storms. Uh, deer also eat the needles. Birds and little mammals chomp on the, the seeds that you can find in the cones. It's real, real essential for forest composition wherever it grows naturally. And humans have made heavy use of this tree too. Like all sorts of stuff was made from its wood. 
crates and roofing, framing. Although it's used in traditional woodworking like that has fallen off quite a bit in recent years. And hemlock wood is kind of brittle too. So it was never really a top market choice to begin with but it was really popular for use in leather tanneries. Uh, the bark makes a really dark color in comparison to other tree species used a lot in traditional leather tanning. Uh, it's mostly synthetic compounds used for that stuff nowadays though, so our little hemlock here should be safe. Of course, Native Americans made heavy use of it too before the Europeans got here. Uh, the bark was used in dyes, for example, and you can actually make tea out of the needles, which was said to ease uh, pain from arthritis or other, or, or like any other kind of joint soreness or stiffness too. Uh, it's, it's most common use nowadays though, is just gonna be as an ornamental tree. And you can see why, it's a pretty, pretty cool little guy. Uh, one major issue this tree has to watch out for though, is this uh, invasive little bug from East Asia called the woolly adelgid that got accidentally introduced to Eastern North America back in the 50s. It's basically this little bug that sits and sucks on the sap of hemlock trees. Uh, the bug's got a bunch of natural predators back home in Asia, so it's not really a big threat to any tree populations over there, but here it can totally decimate a hemlock tree. Uh, if you ever spot little whitish clusters on a hemlock, then it's a good chance you're seeing an infested tree. The white blobs are the woolly adelgid egg sacs. I did read though that researchers have had some success with releasing a special type of beetle from back in Asia into the afflicted forests though. The beetle preys pretty much exclusively on the adelgids and has done a decent job of cutting into their populations from what I've seen. So hopefully that can help solve the problem. Because right now there's a lot of places that are like straight up in danger of losing their Eastern hemlock forests entirely. Particularly down in the South where it doesn't get as cold. The adelgid doesn't wait for trees to grow up before it goes after them either like some other invasive pests do. So it can jump on young trees. And since it takes like at least 20 years for a hemlock to start producing seeds, that becomes a big issue. That's about all I got for you guys today on the Eastern Hemlock. So I think I'll leave y'all in this sweet little courtyard full of strange split Eastern Hemlocks with the first stand from the poem, Hemlock by Emily Dickinson. I think the hemlock likes to stand upon a marge of snow. It suits his own austerity and satisfies an awe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.